Good morning. Evaluate 0 to 1 fourth of 1 over quantity 1 minus 4x squared square rooted. Okay, so we see two squares underneath a square root and an integral. So first thought is um, inverse trigonometric substitution. I know. First, your, your heart sinks a little bit like, oh, I know where this is going. Yes, so do I. But we can do this. Keep faith. And it's not too bad. Okay, so we'll start by using the mnemonic. So I'm going to say that u, no, I'm going to say that x equals one half sine of u. The mnemonic is if the sine is with the x, then x equals sine of something. If the sine is with the not x, then x equals secant of something. And if you just have two squares added together without the radical, then you have x equals tangent of something. This something is going to be u. And our goal here is going to make, we want the, um, we want these to be the same. Okay, that was a little vague. We want to make this 4 equal to this 1. And the way we're going to do that is by multiplying it by 1 half squared. 1 half squared will work out kind of like this. So we have 4 over 2 squared, which is 4, which will give us 1. That's our goal. And that's why we say that we have x equals 1 half sine of u. That's where the 1 half comes in. And just to kind of foreshadow, we will do some derivatives. So we have derivative x equals derivative x, one half cosine of u du. Um, let's see, we'll also find x squared. x squared equals one fourth sine squared of u. And then just to be extra thorough, because we know we're gonna need it, we'll find what u is. So u is arc sine of two x. So we just took this and rearranged it. And then arc sine is just the inverse of sine. Okay, so now we start plugging things in and hope for the best. And if it doesn't work out, we'll just start again, which is demoralizing, but it's not the end of the world. Okay, so we'll have integral. I'll leave off the limits of integration. That way I don't have to do the conversion yet. I'll go back to x before I actually solve the problem. We have one over 1 minus 4x squared, so we come over here. So we have 4 times 1 fourth, just like we predicted, as the prophecy foretold, sine squared of u. Nope, that u is inadequate. Put in a square root sign, there we go. And then dx, we'll have a 1 half cosine of u du. Okay, that's not too bad. So now we'll get another color. And we'll do green. That way we can show that the fours cancel. And we are left with, hope, hope. I move the one half outside. We'll have a cosine of u du on the top. And we, one minus sine squared of u on the bottom, square rooted. Okay. And that looks reasonable. Now we need to find out what one minus sine squared of u is. So we do the Pythagorean theorem, cosine squared or sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. Cosine squared equals one minus sine squared. I know there's supposed to be like a U over here. I left it off for convenience. This is my mental thinking scratch paper. I can't actually remember the, um, when one minus sine is squared, one minus sine squared equals. So I have to figure it out every time. And I figured out that it's cosine squared. So I have one half cosine of U du over cosine squared, square rooted of u. And then simplifying that, the cosine squared, square rooted, we'll just go to cosine. And then we'll those will cancel. We're left with 1 half integral du, which will be 1 half u equals, and there's usually a plus c, but there's actually limits to the integration. So when we put those back on, the c would end up canceling out. So I'm going to leave off the limits of integration. Um, I'm going to leave off the plus c for now. So we know that u is 
arcsine of 2x u equals one half arcsine nope arcsine of 2x now that we're back to x we can put the limits of integration back in i think it was one fourth zero to one fourth zero to one fourth okay and so now hmm hmm interesting okay okay we can do this i'm going to write it out just to make everything a little bit more obvious so we'll do the one half here and then we'll have the arc sine of let's see two times one fourth is one half minus arc sine of zero i'm really terrible at finding out what the arc sine of things are, so I'm going to go through this part a little bit slower. So arc sine of one half, we'll say that arc sine of one half equals y. This y here, it's just there to help me think. Um, so I can be like, okay, what is this y? Kind of like when you have a treasure map, you put the x there. That way you're like, oh, that's my goal. So my goal here is to eh, think about y. Okay, so arc sine of one half, which is y equal. So if we take the sine of both sides, sine, sine, then one half equals sine of y. This gets a little bit more familiar because we recognize that one half is part of our triangle, not triangle, circle, unit circle, unit circle that seems reasonable. So you got your pi over six, you have your pi over four, and you have your pi over three. Hmm. Uh, probably should write down here. There we go. This will be our pi over three. And for this, we know this is going to be one half square root of three over two. And we know that the one half comes first because this is the sine. This, no. Hmm. No, that's wrong. That's square root of three over two. Square root of three over two, one half. And this one will be the opposite, which will be one half square root of three over two. Okay, so at pi over six, we know that um, the, let's see here, the x value will be bigger than the y value. So this is the x value. And so we know square root of three over two is bigger than one half because square root of three is, is somewhere between one and two. So between one and two is bigger than one. So the big value, which is the cosine, which is the x value, will be the big one. So square root of three over two is this, and then one half is that. So we know this is correct. So we want to find out where sine of y equals one half. So that's going to be pi over six, because this is the sine value, the y value, if you will. So if we come back up here, Oh, oh, mm, mm, green. This right there, arc sine of one half, this will be one half times arc sine of one half, which we now know is pi over six. And then we want to find out what the arc sine of zero is. So arc sine of zero is what value of theta will give us zero for sine. So we know that sine of zero equals zero. So arc sine of zero, do the arc sine of both sides. Arc sine, arc sine, we get zero because these this arc sine cancels out with this sine equals arc sine of zero. So zero. So we get pi over six minus zero. And then our final answer will be pi over 12 because one half times pi over six. Oop. This, wow, look at that. That was that was a long, treacherous journey. Quite the odyssey. No, there's no way I can save that. There we go. Pi over 12, right here. Oop, oop, oop. There we go. Okay, so to backtrack, get a big view of what we just did right there. So we took our we had our equation we want to take the integral of. We immediately thought inverse trigonometric because we had a square root and two squares and they one was subtracted from the other one. Um, 
We know that substitution probably wouldn't work because there's no x up here in the numerator. So we went for inverse trigonometric, did our calculations, and then we're actually we were asked to find what the value of a couple points were, uh, zero and um, one one fourth. Um, I guess limits of integration. So you want to evaluate it at specific limits. So we plug those in. We're not really used to actually finding the arc sine of values, but we stumbled our way through it and got and figured out what the angles were that were associated with these values. Plugged them in, and we finally got an answer, which was pi over 12, which is actually an angle. So our the angle would be pi over 12. Okay, sounds good. That's how you approach this problem. Thanks for stopping by. See you in the next one.